Nityanandam. With all auspicious blessings and grace of my Guru, His Holiness Paramahamsa Sri Nityananda Swamiji, I welcome you to this series for those who do not know about Hinduism. This is a new web series I've started just to share some of the insights I have learned because I did not know much about Hinduism before I met Swamiji. Maybe I knew a superficial aspect of it as we all socially practice the pujas, the rituals, the little bit of homas, the little bit of praying, oh God, please help me pass through my exams and please bless me that this business does well. And of course, we all have tend to say or let's have a bribery relationship with God saying, oh, if I get this, I will give you this rather than bribery, I would say a barter system. So this was my very superficial understanding of my religion, my culture, my dharma, which I learnt in depth after I met Swamiji, after I started watching his discourses, after I came, became a part of the Sangha and I took up sannyas. Being initiated into sannyas, rather a monk, teaches you to be established and to follow dharma on a straight line. Because one, you don't have any other distractions and you cannot be distracted also even if distractions do come your way. That is the dharma of sannyas. So given that, this opportunity was a great life for me to follow, understand dharma which is based on integrity and authenticity for each and every human being. Renunciations or renunciates are often looked upon as someone who leaves a society, who runs away from responsibilities of family, marriage, children, working, running a business. That's how renunciates and the word renunciation is looked upon. Someone who chooses poverty over wealth. That's a very wrong concept we all seem to have gotten from childhood. Renunciation, the actual truth, does not mean that you choose poverty over wealth or poorness over richness or inauspiciousness over auspiciousness. No, it means choosing to have a lifestyle that is not, um, that is not let me say, greased or fueled by what we have around us, by the wealth or by auspiciousness or by richness. When you are not fueled by any of these factors, you will have all of these in life. That is only a renunciate. A perfect example of the renunciates were King Janaka of the Kingdom of Videha, that is Lord, um, Goddess Sati's, Sita's father, sorry, Sita's father, and Lord Rama, the Avatar Purusha, the king of Ayodhya. If you take them to be as human beings, even if you do not aspect in the avatara factor of theirs, they were not attached to the royalty, the richness, the wealth of the kingdoms. They came, they did their work, established on the principle of renunciation. Even though Lord Rama and King Janaka lived in palaces as kings, surrounded by wealth, surrounded by men, women, and people who are willing to serve them all over and they had everything on the fingertips. They were not, not at all motivated, moved, nor fueled by this factor in life. So then it is there, they will use it. If it serves the purpose for which they are living, then it is used. Otherwise, they do not have any other cognition towards the king, towards the title of the king, towards the kingdom, the wealth or its people. This most of us would have heard in a different way, like how Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that um, you should only do your action and not look forward for the fruits of the action because it causes suffering. Whether it causes suffering or not, it causes a lot of conflict. Of course, it causes suffering also. Without our realizing it, the more you get attached either to people, things, or even the concept of things, or the concept of wanting to achieve things in life. The cognition of wanting things to achieve in life for the sake of others, for respect in society, or so you can lead a better life, or you can give your parents a better life, 
these cognitions, these concepts mean that you have some attachment towards the action and when that action either ful fulfills you to what you expect then you feel a certain satisfaction or if it fails to fulfill your expectation then you start feeling suffering, suffocation and you feel you are a failure. Rather, once the best way Swamiji says is, the moment you have decided this is the path of my life without expecting, oh if I do this then I have to get this, instead of that, you be authentic to your life's purpose. Okay, I am going to do this because this is what I feel is my purpose of my life. You can always opine and judge but you cannot move every aspect of your life attached to the judgment. For example, if I am going to invest in a business, I may say, okay, I am investing about 15 lakhs. So if I invest in, let's say, bottled water, I might get 200 crores by the end of 5 years. Now to make the 200 crores, I have to really expand my business and do work and all that. That is the action. But the moment we start thinking, I am going to get 200 crores, oh God, what happens if I fail? Or if the business fails, some kind of an unprecedented failure or some kind of a natural calamity you come across, how does it affect you inside of you? That is only called a space of being clutched to the worldly affairs. A renunciate will still inf invest 15 lakhs. A man who lives in the space of renunciation, who lives in the space of just the action and not enjoying the fruits of the action, will invest 15 lakhs, will work hard to, re to achieve the 200 crore target, but he will not be motivated or obstructed by fear in any, any place nor greed in any place. He will just do it because he wants to do it. He enjoys creating that. Other than that, there will be no other motivation. I have seen Swamiji also. I have been in the Sangha in the last seven years and I have seen Swamiji. He is never attached to anything in life. He just keeps working and whatever happens, the results, happens as a result of that work. Not that, oh, I am going to achieve so much this year, so I am going to work so much, I am going to get so many people, I am going to get so much. No. He enjoys the fact that he is going to give enlightenment to so many people. So he keeps working. The result of which people come. It's not just with people or work, even with things I've seen. Swamiji is never attached to things. If they are there, great. If they are not there, great. What is there? I am not attached to it. It does not cause him any kind of fear or anything. That was the most beautiful factor I have learned from Swamiji. And this is one of the basic principles of, of our dharma, renunciation. If you are married, unmarried, sannyasi, non-sannyasi, it does not matter. But the moment you develop the space of renunciation in yourself, then your actions will be only from the space of joy joy of creation rather than the space of expectation oh if I earn 200 crores then my life will be great my family can live a luxurious life my son will go to US and study my daughter I will get her married to the best uh, to the next best industrialist all these fancy illusory tower, uh, towers that we build around that will not be built but still they will happen as an effect as a side effect or the ripple effect of your authenticity and love for the creation. If you have any more questions regarding renunciation or any other principle and philosophy of Hinduism, please write to me and I will get back to you. Oh, I had a question I had to answer. Uh, one viewer has asked, what is Dasa Bhava in Hinduism? Doesn't that mean that we are slave of God? Doesn't Hinduism actually teach us through this that we are slaves to God. No. Dasa does not mean slave. Slave is an English word. Please understand all our Indian languages do not have an equal nor anywhere near equivalent meaningful words in English. Dasa means devotion. Devotion does not mean slave. 
you yourself would have experienced this. All the viewers may have experienced it at this some point or the other. When you do something just out of pure love and devotion, when the love becomes incomparable, no reason, incomprehensible, that is devotion. Many people go to temple, they go to see Shiva, they go to see Hanuman, they go to see um, Devi, they go to see even the snake goddesses temples. Again and again they feel compelled to go. Does it mean you are a slave of the deities? <coughs> no, there is something in that that is making you come there, that is a pull of the super consciousness telling you, come here, you are meant to be part of me. When that part of you becomes more, that becomes devotion. That becomes incomparable devotion. You can't compare it to anything else in life. And from that space, whatever you do is never slavery. I think it's the most ridiculous word that of English language. Because they are used to having slaves. They say that our prayers, our God also call us slaves. Never in any sacred text have we been told that man is God's slave. Dasabhava does not mean slavery. Dasabhava means just incomparable devotion. Doing action out of incomparable devotion and joy. Anything that is done out of devotion and sadness may be slavery. But anything that is done out of devotion and just pure joy is Dasabhava. If you have any more questions, clarifications, please leave it in the inbox below and I will get back to you. Thank you all for watching. Nityanandam.